Downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral. Whenever I get asked about my favorite YouTuber, I almost never have a straight answer. I mean, what exactly does favorite YouTuber even mean? Is it the YouTuber who I watch the most, or the one I enjoy the most? Is it who makes me laugh the most, or who's gotten me through the most? Is it even a matter of who's the most of anything? Is it even just one YouTuber? I. This is why I hate having to pick favorites with anything, not just YouTube. Because there's often more than one candidate for such a title. And they all have such wildly different content that I can't really quantify or compare how much I enjoy them, let alone pick the best one. But if it were to come down to one, I'd probably pick Emplemon. And I don't make this choice lightly, with YouTubers like Dank Pods and Jimmy here and Todd in the Shadows and Summoning Saul existing, the competition is fierce. But yeah, I think Eblemon is probably my favorite over all of them. And the funny thing is, even though I've stumbled upon his content multiple times over the past decade, it wasn't until last year when I finally gave his channel the attention it deserved. I remember back in 2014, when I was still in middle school, when I first discovered YouTube on my 3DS. And among the angry guitar players and the greatest freakouts and the Psycho series and the Sail Cats, there was this one video I stumbled upon that I would go on to forget almost immediately. And it was a YouTube poop called The Uncredibles from some kid called Emperor Lemon. Now, at the time, I saw YouTube poops as nothing more than half literal shit posts. Like, even if they were funny and I'd go on to respect them much more as time went on, I never really took them seriously back then. At least not enough to consider individual YouTube poopers like Emperor Lemon worth diving into. So, I ended up forgetting about the video and him and moving on with my life. And it wouldn't be until four years later in April 2018 when I'd stumble across him again. Among the many based Jimmys in the world lies someone called Jimmy Fa- I mean Jimmy Kimmel, who's well known for being the most aggressively mid talk show host of all time. And coming from me, that's saying a lot. I couldn't care less about TV in general, let alone late night talk shows, let alone Jimmy Kimmel. But when I first saw this thumbnail for a video titled Jimmy Kimmel Represents Everything Wrong with American Entertainment from a guy called Amp Lemon, something about it intrigued me. The magazine art mess of a thumbnail combined with the rather bold title piqued my curiosity. For the first and really only time in my life, I wanted to watch something about Jimmy Kimmel. Thus, leading me to my second introduction to Amp Lemon. And to be fair, it was memorable, but for mixed reasons, right? On the one hand, I found myself kind of sort of agreeing that Jimmy Kimmel is boring and hypocritical with the whole blackface incident and the idea theft and the grandstanding and whatever, but I couldn't help but feel a bit uncomfortable as I watched it. I felt like he was giving Kimmel way too much credit for the world's issues and that he was kind of wasting his voice ranting this much about someone most people don't care about at all. And then he started going off on liberals on how he hates them and it's like, okay, sorry for wanting free healthcare, jeez. I didn't exactly know what to make of this video, but I was intrigued enough by Amp's editing and commentary style to check out his channel, where I eventually stumbled upon his video on Behind the Meme. And needless to say, this video was brutal. The guy went into excruciating detail, absolutely demolishing Behind the Meme for, in his words, ruining the memescape as we knew it. He spent a whole bunch of time in the beginning outlining the differences between normies and outsiders, as he called them. Basically saying that normies are bad for memes because they ruin them for the outsiders, which I understand and somewhat agree with, right? After all, oversaturation is the great filter for memes. But I couldn't help but feel like I was being lectured to at points, and that he was trying to gatekeep discovering and enjoying memes, even if that wasn't what he was trying to do. And when he really unloaded on behind the memes, specifically on his YouTube poops video, again, even though Amp Lemon was right, he came off to me as overly harsh. It was like, yeah, I agree with the gist of your video, but you're kind of an egotistical prick, right? At least that's the vibe I got back then. It came down to a difference in how we handle creators we don't like. While Amp liked to rant about them, I prefer to just stop watching them and move on and pretend they don't exist. And this video made it crystal clear that I didn't really enjoy Amp Lemon's brazen rants, so I stopped watching and I forgot about him again. And a few months later, I would discover Data Wink. Data Wing is probably one of my favorite mobile games of all time, and is probably the only one I consistently replay on a ritualistic basis. 
Part of it is because it's completely free, and by that I mean no ads, no in-app purchases, just a little donate button and that's it. The setting takes place inside a phone where you're this courier triangle sort of program delivering instructions from the mother brain. It's got a neat little story with stylish graphics, a short, albeit eclectic pack of stages, great controls, and a general level of polish that makes for a sweet experience. An experience elevated tenfold by the music. It is a collection of some of the best Vaporwave tracks out there, during a time when Vaporwave wasn't so saturated and cliché. Every single song in the OST worked perfectly with the atmosphere of Datawink. And one of the most iconic songs from the bunch is probably Eastbirth's Daydream. Back in September 22, alright so pretty recently, after another ritualistic playthrough, I'd go on to search for Daydream on YouTube so I could listen. And as I was listening, I decided to check the comments to find some fellow Data Wing fans to vibe with. But aside from one comment which referenced the virus, that's not what I found. Instead, I found a whole bunch of, I guess, quotes from some video about some guy jumping from space. And just my luck that one of the recommended videos on the side was this summoning salt looking video about the history of the highest jump. And this was the moment I was once again introduced to Amp Lemon. And I think it's safe to say, third time's the charm. I expected this video to be as proof as summoning salt but with real life and nothing really more than that. What I ended up getting was probably one of the best video essays I've ever watched on YouTube. It combines history, philosophy, excellent storytelling, impeccable writing, and tasteful minimalist editing into a 30 minute long masterpiece. The way this video effortlessly ties together as many themes as possible to explain the semantics of falling and how it further uses those themes and semantics to drive the rest of the video along makes it one of the most captivating pieces of content I've seen. Not to mention, at arguably the most iconic part of the entire thing, it features Daydream which is the cherry on top of this magnificent Sunday of a video. And after I finished watching it, I would go on to watch another implement video. And another one. And another one. And then my parents came in and yelled at me for forgetting to cook dinner. Right, you get the point. After many years, I finally got into implement. And as I dove into his content, most of which now consists of these video essays, I found out that this was the same guy who made that Jimmy Kimmel video and the Behind the Meme video, and I eventually discovered that he's also the same guy who made The Uncredibles way back when. Why just who the f*** is this guy anyways? Something I realized right away is that it's kind of hard to categorize Emblemon, as there are many different kinds of content the guy has made over the years. From his YouTube poops, to his rants, to 60 second meme reviews, to YouTube history, to his Never Ever series, to time travel, to the video essays he makes today. And even with the consistency of the video essays, the topics they cover are as eclectic as Datawing's levels, where outside of some overarching themes and motifs, there's really no telling what Emp will talk about next. The only thing that's for sure about Implement is nothing's for sure. Seriously, this guy has covered topics like Spongebob, The Simpsons, Home Videos, Rick and Morty, Hungrybox, NASCAR, New Coke, NASCAR, Video Games, NASCAR Video Games, Nintendo, Underwear, The Matrix, Freddy Got Fingered, Fucking Moon Man of all things, and the list goes on. Like, it is scary just how ahead of the curve he was in some ways. And not just in terms of his writing ability, but also his ability to adapt and mature. And what really brought a lot of context to everything is one particular video Amp Lemon has made not too long ago titled The Origin of the Downward Spiral. This is his million subscribers special, an hour and a half long video that is structured like a cheap therapy session where the green Simpson himself just unloads about his YouTube journey talking about his motives behind every major turning point in his transition from Emperor Lemon to Amp Lemon. Alright, his battle with the audience, his battle with YouTube, his battle with the YouTube poop community, and eventually his battle with himself. It is a deeply personal video that explains why he always complained about everything, about all the anger that has been building up inside of him from his YouTube poop days, and how 2017 YouTube exasperated it all to the point where he just felt like unloading it onto one person that being behind the meme, and how this sort of mindset has stuck with him and evolved over the years and how by all accounts, he shouldn't even exist anymore. Yet here he is, having rode the downward spiral all the way to 1 million subscribers. 
To say the least, this video made me rethink a lot of things. I don't think I can fully explain just how much this video really opened my eyes about the past few times I stumbled upon him. All I can say, really, is that this was the video that made me decide that Amp Lemon is my favorite YouTuber now. And it took pretty much the entire time I've been on YouTube to finally appreciate his content. Hindsight being 2020, I think the Jimmy Kimmel and behind the meme videos I've seen were the worst choices to judge Amp Lemon on. And I mean, the Behind the Meme video in particular was practically disowned after Behind the Meme went on his own downward spiral. But now, I guess having this extra context and a little growing up of my own helped me understand the spirit of these videos more. And that extra layer of relatability on top of everything else really cements it. And you can argue even now that there are many other YouTubers who are technically better, right? Summoning Salt may be better at storytelling, Nexpo is a much better editor, and Emp isn't exactly a part of my daily life like Optimus or R Slash is. But in terms of making the most fascinating, unique, creatively structured, and relatable content I've ever seen, I think Emp11 takes the cake. I think the best way to put it, and this may be cliche, but there will never ever be another YouTuber quite like Emp Lemon. <laughs>